So let's see. What do we got? Uh, yes, Charles, you are up next. Charles is going to grace us with some groovy stuff. Come on up, Charles. My groovy days are gone, but I am a kitten in your jungle. All right, we got something somewhere. Maybe. 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 All right, we'll go with... Sorry. Okay. Impatient mistress. Poetry is an impatient mistress. Even when I strive to write the longer tale, she demands my attention, and I can't deny her. I can't deny her because she satisfies me and then prods me to make love to her again and again. I pray she never leaves me, for if she does, my heart will be shattered and my soul will become impotent. One of my story poems. My father in his later, this is called Living with Patriarchs, which will probably be the title to a book of poetry when that time comes. My father in his later years wrote in a draftsman's script on small pieces of paper. I know he feared his thoughts were going before he remember them. Toward the end, each became like confetti in a wind, and it was hard for both of us. Still, he had a good life, until at 91, in his grace, he forgot not to falter and fall. With my grandfather, the stroke took him before he told me about the war. I think I could wear his clothes and become him with what I know now. Recovering from a head wound, I'd asked if you'd seen my wife, Frances Coolidge. In 1918, while I clerked, she packed and left me, just five days home from France. Later, I'd find my chair by the fire in a house where I live with five women. I'm protected by pipe smoke and the Hartford Current. Researching my family lines these last two years, I've become more aware of illness in my relations. I learned from my great-grandfather, I learned my great-grandfather, in a rage, chased his wife with a large kitchen knife. A finite engineer, he raced high wheelers and was institutionalized for a while. Today, with grandsons of my own, it's this personal ancestry interests me most. I make notes and try not to forget. Couple, couple, couple ones, short one here. Base metal. If you heat something hot enough, a base metal perhaps, it will give off li light and change its state, becoming liquid, then gas, like water and air. Could it be that our Mother Earth, in her warming, is doing the same to us, to make us illuminate and change our state of mind? This one's for fun, it's not about global warming. Frostbite in Fresno. Travel ice tunnel freeways with BMW 
dog sleds, mastodon transit, yaks on cell phone, weather as up to date as the nose on your face. Work from home, sweet home, turn off the AC, PG and E, NBC, CNN. Scrape the frost off the TV, ice off the dish, or use it as a bird bath for penguins. Scan the links between glaciers, they're par five below zero. Leave your clubs in the freezer. Put grandma on an ice floe. Jog 10 miles in snowshoes, just do it. Send an email to Quinn the Eskimo. CC the White House. Pass a law against an ice age. Amend it to be shorter. Remember, your vote counts. Put your money in a snowbank. Feign interest. Retire early. Wake up to the cold light of day. Check your toes for frostbite. Take a vacation to someplace warm. Mm. Last one. Last one. Counting stars. She said, the universe is endless, and these stars can't be counted. Count them, and I will love you. I said the first word that came to me, two. This she picked, this she plucked from my lips like sweet fruit. The heavens revolved around her. On a morning sometime later, my 50th birthday, she packed the telescope and her computations. She left me, a photo of a distant nebula, a black hole under my pillow, and a postcard from Europa. Years later, standing beneath an empty sky, I rechecked my calculations. I, confident at last, I formed new constellations from ashes and dust. Thank you very much, Charles. Thanks again.